Hello everybody, my name is Anton. My name is Jaro and together we are going to present this webinar to you. Our, top, our topic is top 7 mistakes that are killing your push notification campaigns. But before we start, please let us know if you can see and hear us. If all is well with video and sound, please shoot a couple of messages in the chat. Great. Thanks. Seems like you guys really want to get this webinar started. If you have any comments on the quality of video or you're unable to hear, to hear us, do let us know immediately. Uh, I believe we have received a lot of questions on Facebook before yes, the we webinar. Do. At the end of the webinar, we will select the author of the best question and he or she will receive a bonus and the price of a hundred bucks. That is correct. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions during the webinar itself. And uh, please add them to the question tab and we will try to answer as many of them at the end of the webinar. Um, if we do not have time to answer all the questions, do not worry about this. We'll have a special post uh, on our blog where we'll answer all, uh, all the questions that we have received. And before we proceed, let us briefly introduce ourselves. I'm Senior Customer Success Manager, taking care of advertisers' success at Propeller Ads. I usually face the most common mistakes made by advertisers and also collect feedback about our platform and ways to improve. And I'm the head of Affiliate Club program. I've been working in Propeller Ads for more than four years. Push traffic is one of my favorite ad formats. First of all, uh, you can uh, reach millions of users simultaneously in the span of a minute or a second. Secondly, it's a universal ad format and you can promote literally uh, everything, every offer affiliates work with uh, these days. Finally, it, uh, it provides a lot of space for a creative mind. Uh, uh, you may wonder why we have selected uh, mistakes as a topic of our webinar, not for example advantages of push traffic. Firstly, push traffic has proven itself as one of the most efficient ad formats in affiliate marketing. Propeller Ads has never been working with, uh, has been working with push traffic for almost two years. We have, been, we have accumulated tremendous expertise and experience in working with push traffic. At the same time, we see that even experienced uh, media buyers keep making the same mistakes. We do believe that it will be useful to educate the community uh, on the most common mistakes and hopefully it uh, will uh, help you to uh, to save your ad budgets and uh, I suggest to move forward to the main subjects that we are going to cover during the webinar on this slide you can see our busy agenda make sure not to miss anything we will start with what may be wrong with the creatives uh, yeah probably creative uh, creatives is uh, the most important part of uh, push notification campaigns uh, let's begin with uh, what we can work with uh, uh, before setting up a campaign. Going from top, we have a little title of that and then there is a description which is usually more detailed. Besides text, you can use visual images. First of all, a small icon. Furthermore, optionally, you can add a banner image. This can be used for both desktop and mobile devices. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, guys, I have a question about the next slide. What seems to be wrong with this push? Uh, please type your versions in the chat. Okay, thank you, Kieran. Uh, okay, uh, not, not, not too much of activity, but... Uh, oh, thank you, Richard. Uh, but uh, in this slide, uh, this is an obvious example of what uh, not to do when uh, you make creatives for a push campaign. Uh, firstly, we do recommend to proofread uh, the text, especially when you work uh, in countries which languages you do not speak. Uh, secondly, check out the icon. I don't think it can be called creative or eye-catchy. Uh, finally, the quality of banner leaves very much to be desired. And uh, we should always keep in mind that we do not have a second chance to grab attention of our potential customers. Okay, now let's discuss um, how to assess the quality of your creatives. It is said that you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And people won't click something appears to be wrong with your ad. So is your push too cliche or you try to be creative at all? Another thing to keep in mind is creativity. Users are being bombarded with thousands of ads every day and you have to stand out from the crowd. Are you trying to be creative in your approach? It is 
it is not enough just to describe the product. You just have to be pushed and teased into clicking on your ads by attractive images. Another thing, even if you have um, amazing uh, creatives, if their quality is perfect, uh, we should always uh, keep in mind our target audience. Uh, even uh, if they are great, uh, you should not keep uh, you should keep a close eye on demographic and cultural portrait of your customers. Uh, let's uh, take trading products, for instance, uh, for instance, crypto, forex, or binary. They are popular among young people, and consequently, all kinds of creatives that resonate well with the 20, 30 years old should perform well. And uh, ask yourself a question: How often you uh, you change the creative? You, you need to do it at least twice a week. And if you don't use the high activity user targeting, if your ad frequency is high more than three to 20, by 24 hours, uh, there is a high competition on ad zone. And in all other cases, as soon as your CTR starts to drop down for more than 10%. Overall, it is a good practice to change your creative regularly. Check spy tools for inspiration, but don't just copy and paste from them. Uh, the next slide. Uh, yeah, I've me we mentioned that uh, banner image uh, is uh, optional. Uh, according to our observations, uh, uh, various verticals perform differently uh, with large banners. Uh, to start with, uh, utilities and software are usually promoted uh, with just uh, text and uh, icons. Uh, sweepstakes, e-commerce, uh, Nutra, and trading offers perform equally with and without uh, pre, uh, without banners. And uh, uh, at the same time, we would like to note that uh, most verticals still require a large uh, banner, and they uh, convert better if you use uh, large banners. I'm talking about uh, dating, games, gambling, uh, sports betting. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, what are your favorite verticals? What kind of verticals do you work with? Type your answers in the comments. Dating crypto, sweepstakes, neutral. Well, right. that's interesting. Uh, I, th I think it proves that uh, push notification, uh, it's another proof that uh, push notification is a very universal ad format and can be used basically with uh, every possible vertical in affiliate marketing. Sure. And uh, as we said before, it is important not to bore your audience with the same creatives. Only you've had, had to launch one banner per campaign, but our technologies does not stand still. And we're glad to announce our brand new feature, multi-banner smart rotator, where you are able to launch several banners within one campaign. Now you are able to make the proper A-B testing, guys. Add up to eight creative sets in one push campaign. Use CPC bidding for initial auto-optimization because only the best performing sites will get the clicks. Or use the CPM bidding to A-B test your creatives and each set gets equal traffic volumes. You can decide which one to keep depending on the performance. And finally, understand what images and concepts are the most effective and what kind of CTAs makes them click. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, yeah, I agree. Probably uh, one of the most crucial mistakes these days would uh, not to be using the smart rotator. Uh, aside from this, we have other pretty useful features on our platform. Uh, for instance, uh, in the dashboard, you can preview uh, your ads before setting up the campaign light, live. Sorry. Uh, when you want to sell something to somebody or want to persuade somebody into doing something, you have to become this somebody for this for a portion of a second. And uh, in the dashboard, you can see how users actually uh, will view your ads. And uh, now I suggest to talk about uh, the most interesting part of this. Uh, I mean examples of creatives and uh, some uh, theoretical principles behind a uh, uh, performing creative. Sure, let's check some uh, cases. So um, always remember to uh, use some uh, exact call to action and some bright colors on the banner. So the users should understand what uh, you want them to do. Uh, on another slide, uh, when you promote some kind of brand, use the branded colors and it will strengthen your pitch. 
Uh, on another slide, it is an example of the teasing te te text. So uh, you always need to use that and uh, make a pitch to the user and ask him to click and uh, know more about the, your product. Okay, and I have another question uh, for you guys. Uh, what do you think uh, users usually pay more attention to, text or visual images? Type the answers in the chat. Visual texts, visual, visual images, right. So uh, according to our research, in general, customers pay more attention to images and banners. The impact formula of a perfect creative is 80% visuals and 20% texts. Uh, well, I think uh, there are so many aspects of creativity that we can keep discussing it for a long time. Unfortunately, timing of our webinar is pretty limited. So uh, let's move forward to uh, the next topic, uh, namely policies. Every traffic source has its own rules for running ads and propeller is not an exemption. We have our own database of more than 300 million users and we are going, uh, doing our very best to protect them from our low quality and misleading ads. To start with, we do not allow to scare users into doing something. Uh, this is especially relevant for promotions of utilities and software. Messages like, you may have a virus, possible threat, your phone can explode, are not allowed on your network. Uh, there are uh, other compliant ways to promote these products. Uh, another thing is we ask not to imitate the popular websites because uh, it causes problems to us, to our publishers, and your campaigns will be declined. Uh, so on, on the left, you can see something uh, that uh, won't go through with us, but uh, the image from the right is absolutely legit. Uh, however, it's uh, almost the same. It's just not copying uh, any uh, interface. Uh, the next uh, point is uh, pretty similar. Uh, we do not allow uh, illegal uh, usage of uh, logos because logos are copyrighted by brands. However, there are always, uh, like in many other cases, uh, there is uh, there are always a, a way around, and uh, you can use logos on the product uh, on the actual products that you promote. In this case, you can see that uh, the sexually provocative texts and images and icons are not allowed with us. Uh, also, it won't bring you the relevant users or because uh, every, every male would like to click on this uh, ad and it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean that it is relevant to you. I agree. Uh, and the final part uh, when it comes to policies, uh, we do not allow using uh, celebrities or politicians' names uh, in uh, ad campaigns. So uh, one cannot use texts like uh, Elon Musk's uh, secret uh, brain pill or uh, Lady Gaga has just messaged you. Uh, I think we have covered, uh, we are done with policies and we can move forward to more technical stuff. Sure, so let's check our user activity targeting. We have divided our audience into a different activity le le uh, levels. Uh, from uh, highly active users registered with us less than five days ago, uh, these are in the category uh, high active users, and we recommend to start all, all your tests, uh, all your new campaigns with uh, that activity level and see how the user interacts with your ad and see if that's enough for you. Uh, then you can move to the other category, uh, uh, other uh, audiences, and uh, cut down on the um, uh, costs. Uh, increase your ROI because uh, in other activity levels uh, there are more volumes and uh, less prices. And uh, let's move to the next slide. Uh, here you can see uh, general CTRs for various activity groups from our recent uh, research. Uh, you can see that uh, the numbers uh, vary greatly. And uh, uh, this is another proof why uh, it's uh, very, uh, we do recommend to try user activity targeting. Because uh, if you run campaigns targeting the whole uh, database, uh, you can overpay for low activity users. At the same time, traffic is traffic and uh, uh, all user activities can be successfully used in uh, 
uh, depending on uh, a product, depending on uh, on uh, on the geo you run campaigning, you are running campaigning, and uh, depending on the goal of your campaign. Uh, by the way, Jero, are you subscribed to any push notifications yourself? Yeah, I do. I'm following some news. And what about you, Nathan? Uh, I received notification from a couple of uh, industry-related uh, media uh, on my laptop. Uh, I'm using an uh, iPhone, so uh, I cannot uh, subscribe to web push notifications on the phone. Uh, however, there are rumors that Apple is going to uh, change uh, their attitude towards uh, push technology and probably uh, this can give a serious boost to the market. You should give a boost to the sweepstakes because iPhone users would be able to win some uh, Samsung's devices probably on sweeps. Probably is. Yes. Uh, so um, the, to sum up, we always recommend to divide your campaigns by different uh, categories, not to waste the budget and divide uh, what kind of users will interact with your uh, creatives. To sum up, user activity tagging can be a very efficient tool and it will be a, a serious mistake not at least to give it a try. And now let's chat about uh, targeting. Uh, targeting is crucial in finding the right slice of traffic for every offer. And for push campaigns you have uh, a lot of targeting options and let's talk about them in more uh, details. First of all, you can target uh, geo cities, devices, operational systems, uh, uh, browsers, language of browsers, uh, uh, and we also have uh, uh, connection type targeting, so you can target uh, particular carrier users. And uh, uh, do not forget about uh, placement optimization. Uh, probably comparing to some other traffic sources like uh, Popandras, um, push uh, notifications, uh, in, uh, for push notifications, uh, zone optimization is not uh, that vital. However, obviously, some placements, uh, 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 performance for different placements may vary. So it's always uh, good to, uh, monitor, to know your numbers and know which uh, placements bring you uh, the highest ROI. And uh, also, <clears throat> you cannot run always just on white and just on narrow targeting. Here's a recommendation to start with the white targeting first and get some useful information from it like location and geos, then don't just compare results by countries, check the performance by cities, uh, check the device types, uh, where, where the majority of your users are on the mobile devices or desktop, uh, check the operating system, is there more interest from iOS or Android users, and uh, maybe just some particular carrier works for you. And then when you, you decided on that, you can uh, launch uh, several uh, campaigns with the narrow targeting uh, hitting the right users uh, using it. Obviously, precise targeting is a recipe for success in affiliate marketing, but we should always bear in mind uh, the volumes and scalability. A campaign targeting, say, uh, latest Android uh, Spanish users uh, in uh, New York have very little chance of spending a lot, even if it uh, converts like fire. And now let's move to the next chart and uh, talk about frequency. Uh, ad frequency is uh, the number of times you show the ad uh, to a unique user in 24 hours. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the more a user sees an ad, uh, the more likely they will be annoyed by it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, advertising sometimes has to be persistence, uh, persistent, and there is a thin line between annoyance and persistence. Uh, and uh, part of the art of media buying is not to cross it. And speaking about low and high frequency, both approaches have uh, their pros and cons. Uh, for instance, low frequency extends uh, the life of creatives. Uh, it's great when you have decent budget and you intend to, to run a, a long-term campaign. Uh, also, if you have just one landing page, uh, um, uh, this can work for you. At the same time, we have seen cases where frequency was uh, extremely low. And if you target uh, users, say, uh, once in a week, uh, even in a populated geo, you're unlikely to get enough traffic. Uh, on the contrary, uh, high frequency campaigns have uh, uh, running high frequency campaigns. You have to be aware that uh, showing ads to the same users repeatedly will increase the burning rate of your creatives. And uh, using without uh, using high frequency without a good reason may cost you dearly. Uh, however, uh, high frequency campaigns are great if you benefit from uh, event targeting. 
usually in these cases uh, uh, media buyers prefer to run uh, short and intense, intense, intense campaigns uh, usually with incredible ROI and want to scale at all costs. And uh, let's talk in more details about uh, particular cases for high targeting. Oh, sorry, for high frequency. Sure, so here are the examples like uh, some sporting events uh, or some flash sales, uh, like new devices out or like B Black Friday sales. It's always very good to use with a high frequency setup. And uh, after all, the main mistake with frequency is uh, using a uh, certain frag for a campaign or for a product uh, in the wrong uh, situation. And now let's move forward to bidding models. So uh, there are two bidding models available for push campaigns, namely CPM and uh, CPC. Uh, you guys are pros and I don't think uh, we should uh, uh, spend a lot of time explaining the difference between those. Uh, both bidding models have their own advantages. For instance, with the CPC campaigns, you pay only for users that already express some interest in the product. Uh, on the contrary, with the CPM, you can get required volumes irrespective of your CTR rate. Uh, for CPC campaigns, cost of a visitor equals cost of a click. And uh, there is a more comp complicated formula for uh, CPC, CPM. Uh, if you have a high CTR, with CPM campaigns, you can get clicks uh, even cheaper comparing to CPC. Right, so uh, basically if you're in this formula, if you're getting uh, more than two clicks from thousand impressions, it's worth for you to run on the CPM. A smart advertiser would test both approaches to find out what will work best for them or combine uh, uh, both of these approaches. For example, if you can test creatives on CPC and target those with the high CTR on CPM campaigns. Okay, and let's speak about uh, targeting several geos and platforms in uh, one campaign. Uh, so y you shouldn't mix several geos in one campaign as long as uh, you shouldn't mix desktop and mobile. You always need to divide that into a different campaign because the user experience with push notifications is different on these platforms and uh, different campaigns work differently on these um, uh, platforms and different geos. And let's speak about uh, geos and on uh, the next slide you can see an example of uh, a product that can be promoted in uh, different countries, in this case uh, that would be Spain and Argentina. Uh, people speak uh, the same language and uh, uh, seems like it may seem that uh, we can use uh, the same uh, creatives. Uh, however, average of cost of a click uh, may vary greatly, for instance 10 cents in Spain and 1 cent in uh, Argentina. And if you try to bid uh, something uh, in, the, in the middle, let's say 5 cents, uh, you will get most of, uh, most of clicks from a cheaper uh, geo and overpay for those. Uh, I believe we have covered uh, all the major topics and uh, probably it's high time to move to Q&A session. What do you sure. think, Jero? Let's start with a question that concerns a lot of media buyers. And uh, our first question is from Rem. Uh, recently, web push notifications being highly abused by different companies. What do you think? How long will it take for Google to start regulating push, as it happened with Popanders and some banners? Well, uh, firstly, regulations from major players can be a serious issue for every ad uh, format. Uh, in my case, I've been working in PropellerS for quite some time, and uh, every year, uh, every um, uh, Google Chrome update brings uh, a very intense debate uh, among community on whether it's going to end the Papanta market. And as we can, uh, as we all uh, aware, it hasn't happened, and it's uh, very likely uh, not to happen in the future. Uh, uh, Papanta market is not growing due to uh, demographic reasons, not uh, compliance or regulations. And I do believe that the situation with push traffic would be pretty much uh, the same. Uh, to start with, we do not see any abuses uh, for this uh, ad format. Uh, at the same time, the market is uh, developing at a very quick uh, tempo. And uh, uh, now the situation remains uh, the Wild West, because uh, a lot of uh, companies are trying to collect uh, their own database. Uh, 
uh, using some dubious methods and uh, inevitably regulations will come in, in a certain way. Uh, I do believe that it would be uh, a positive sign for, uh, for the industry as a whole because irresponsible players will be removed from uh, the game. Uh, to sum up, we do not see any major threats to pu web push notifications as an advertising uh, format. Uh, thank you very much for your question again, uh, Ram. And let's move to another question. Another question is from Samuel, and it is like, uh, if I generate two push notifications, one with CPM and another with CPC, will I get the same traffic source and zones from both campaigns? Well, uh, Samuel, some of our sources are sending just CPM traffic, others sending just CPC. However, there are some that are sending both. So uh, that's another reason why we always recommend to test both uh, models on CPC and CPM and uh, see, see which of the users will be uh, interested in your uh, product the most. Yeah, I can completely agree. And the next question is from Alexander. Uh, uh, hi, if I'm choosing from several push networks, how can I compare them? Volume of traffic, CPC, what else? How to define the best quality network? Uh, there are many of them right now and low amount of info is confusing. Well, first of all, uh, we do understand uh, your concerns. Uh, indeed, the number of companies uh, that are collecting their database and uh, offer push traffic keeps increasing. Uh, uh, I believe the main criteria is uh, if you manage to make their traffic work for you and earn money. And um, uh, according to the feedback from our advertisers, uh, priority things are volumes and quality of traffic and uh, convenience of self-service platform, uh, namely user friendliness, availability of targeting options, uh, convenient payment methods. Uh, probably I would add uh, that uh, Account management and support are uh, crucial because uh, uh, even the most sophisticated uh, ad platform uh, without uh, humans behind this uh, is uh, pretty useless. I agree, Anton. And uh, let's move to another question from uh, Anto. If I set up nine different campaigns, the first three with max bid CPC and uh, low medium and high CTR, next three are average bid CPC and low medium, high CTR, and the last three are mean bit CPC, all CTR, average bit CPC, all CTR, and max bit CPC, all CTR. With that stack, how much percentual unique traffic I would be getting? In other, in other words, is there any previous setups sending repeated traffic? Uh, well, uh, users, will f uh, users will flow between the activity levels, so it might have some small effect uniqueness-wise which we cannot calculate. Uh, regarding the unique user's dependence on the price, it doesn't has any sensible effect and depends only on your frequency cap setup, where with 124 setup, you, you are only targeting one user per 24 hours and it will be the unique users. Thank you for the question. Well, let's move to the next one. In push notifications, if I eliminate zones with lower CPC, uh, is it the best way to reduce the final cost of leads and sales? Uh, uh, that's the secret. Uh, well, low bid is not equal to bad quality traffic. It may mean less competition, uh, less user activity, less volumes, etc. So if your product and all creatives are good, it should convert even with the low traffic cost and the other way around. Expensive traffic might not bring conversions if product creatives are not attractive for the users. And the next question is from Jonathan. Uh, do you believe that us advertisers are currently in the golden age of push notifications where we can get plenty of high quality traffic at surprisingly low prices? Or do you think that uh, in the future push notifications could be even more lucrative for advertisers than they're uh, right now? Uh, well, uh, obviously, the, in spite of the fact that uh, push notifications have uh, entered uh, the market uh, quite recently it's uh, uh, has proven itself as a very efficient ad format and uh, i think it has uh, reached its uh, maturity it proves its uh, efficiency and uh, uh, probably yes it's uh, the uh, golden age where uh, every uh, player in the market should uh, take the the most from uh, the opportunities it provides 
we have already talked about uh, its uh, advantages and uh, the more uh, time energy and resources in you uh, invest right now in uh, working with push traffic the more uh, the better results you uh, will get we uh, as i mentioned previously we we do not envision any threats to push notification as a, an advertising format uh, however we cannot predict that it will keep uh, growing uh, as uh, it has been doing for uh, uh, for instance for uh, previous several months thank you anton and let's, let's move to the other question from marco and uh, marco is asking i'm an advertiser and use cpc i'd like to understand the effects of ctr on the number of impressions i will get understand that a publisher is interested in many clicks as possible uh, I, as an advertiser, am interested in targeted clicks only. So what if I'd create ultra-targeted as a, a click here if you are from city XY, female, dark head, and between 33 and 36 years old. This would give me a very targeted traffic, thus a high conversion rate. But this would be bad for the publisher only getting a very low CTR. How do you balance this? Is the publisher able to block my ads can he block me as an advertiser or just my ads so new ads from me are, are shown to this audience to his audience again well thank you for the question marco and uh, for us it sounds like a very tricky uh, push notification we've never seen that before but it uh, sounds very legit for us it uh, would go through uh, publisher wouldn't block it and the publisher would uh, get revenues from uh, the other campaigns. Uh, however, with the, this push notification, uh, I don't believe you will get much attention from the users. What do you think, Anton? Well, I have to, feel, uh, to start with, I can agree with you. Uh, finally, I would like, uh, also I would like to comment on the, uh, on the question itself. To start with, uh, we do have uh, for push notifications. We, can, uh, have, we have, do have a lot of uh, various uh, targeting options. However, we should be clear aware of the fact that uh, uh, comparing to, say, social traffic, the uh, targeted options are more limited and you cannot uh, target dark-haired uh, female between 24 and 36 years old. Uh, however, push traffic has uh, its own advantages uh, when it comes to volumes and price. Uh, also, I would like to comment on, the, uh, on publishers and their ability to block ads. Uh, we are an advertising network, we can connect uh, advertisers, advertisers and publishers and uh, basically we pro pro protect uh, our publishers from uh, low quality ads as we talked about in the uh, policy section uh, and uh, so answering your question, a publisher cannot uh, block you as an advertiser. So uh, probably the only uh, criteria for rotating on a particular placement is uh, the ECPM your campaign uh, uh, generates. And ECPM can be reached either with uh, setting up a fixed CPM or uh, achieving a high ECPM with uh, uh, high cost of click or very or high uh, CTR. Right. So um, let's move. To the uh, yeah, I think we are done with uh, with the questions that we have received uh, before the webinar, uh, and uh, let's uh, start let's start let's with the qu start with live questions. The first question is from Marcelo. Uh, burst vertical ca convert good with push notification. Uh, well, as I, we have said several times before. Uh, Push notifications is in a universal ad format. You can promote uh, literally all kinds of uh, uh, verticals media buyers work with uh, these days. Uh, at the same time, all uh, there is uh, some verticals are getting more popular uh, depending on time. For example, Champions League uh, obviously brings uh, a lot of attention to uh, sports betting. Uh, uh, Black Friday is a perfect time for, uh, for instance, for promoting e-commerce offers. Uh, also, you can uh, utilize uh, some major holidays uh, with the, for your creatives. For example, you can uh, use uh, uh, Christmas gift style uh, creatives for sweepstakes. Uh, what do you think, Gerald? What can you add? 
Uh, well, sweepstakes are always uh, in a trend, so uh, yeah, that, that's good. Neutra is good, the Forex, binary options. So um, yeah, that's that's the main ones. Okay, and uh, let's... Uh... Let's move to the other question from uh, Pedro. Push notifications comes from Google Chrome. How are you planning to counter one day an eventual removal from notifications by Google? Have you already thought about that possibility? Well. Uh, we are dependent from Google uh, in some cases, but we are always developing new ad formats and as we discussed during our, the webinar, same rumors uh, always um, um, are about the pop under ads, but uh, they are still alive and uh, we, are, we developed push notifications, also we are developing the native ads now, so uh, I think uh, we will manage to handle that. Yeah, and uh, we have talked about this previously. We do not see any uh, major threat from uh, Google to push notifications as uh, an ad former. Yes, uh, obviously some regulations will be uh, very likely that uh, some regulations will be uh, imposed on the market. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, they eliminate uh, this ad former. Because in general, it has a, it offers a quite positive user experience uh, as uh, users subscribe voluntarily and uh, unsubscribe uh, voluntarily as well. Uh, and uh, as I said before, uh, probably this uh, push notification, uh, these regulations will uh, play uh, a, a good role in the market, and uh, as they uh, remove uh, irresponsible players from uh, the industry. Right. Uh, so, uh, the next question is why Anton look like a bastard? Uh, well, thank you, Pyro, for this question. Uh, well, I don't know what to say because uh, Buster is, uh, for audience outside of Russia, Buster is a famous uh, Russian rapper. And, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes people uh, say that I look uh, quite similar to him and uh, sometimes they even come by to take a photo. So probably I think I can monetize uh, monetize this. Uh, Come and visit us, and uh, you will you will get a signature from Anton. Okay. And let's talk about the next question. Uh, what's uh, a good average CTR? Uh, well, usually it's everything uh, above one or two percent is uh, uh, counted as a good CTR. What do you say, Anton? Well, I can add that, yes, probably the general numbers are uh, what you have said, but uh, we should always keep in mind uh, that uh, traffic is very different. We have talked a lot about uh, user activity and you have seen the numbers. Uh, the average CTRs may vary greatly uh, between uh, high and low activity users. Uh, we can say that uh, uh, and it's quite understandable because high activity users uh, are the users that subscribed just recently. They haven't seen too much ads. On the contrary, uh, people who have been sent uh, notifications for months, they tend to uh, uh, not to react, uh, not to be so responsive to ads. Uh, what else I can add? Uh, do not forget about event targeting uh, when uh, major media basically does uh, uh, the marketing for you. Uh, again, returning to a football match, uh, it, it, it uh, has a lot of media buzz around this, or you know, like, let's say uh, Conor versus Habib fight. Everybody talks about this. And if you, if you uh, like, uh, utilize uh, uh, such major events in your ad campaigns, uh, obviously you will get a lot of attention from uh, the audience uh, what else i can say uh, in general in general for the verticals that perform well with large banners uh, large banners increase uh, ctrs as well uh, and, I, uh, and uh, uh, re returning to your question yes uh, the average numbers are between one and two percent but you should always be aware what uh, user group you are targeting, at which country, at what time, and what uh, creatives you are using. Yeah, so Anton means that so in your case it could be up, up to 30% depending on the case. 
so uh, next question is uh, uh, do you recommend to create a duplicate of push campaigns on native uh, or interstitial format understand that uh, it is dependent on a vertical however if we are talking about the general vertical like diet dating crypto gambling and others uh, well um, Sometimes, yeah, there is a point of uh, creating a duplicate, but not too many, obviously, because uh, because of this, we have limited uh, our campaign creation to uh, to a thirty campaigns a day, because um, uh, this is uh, maximum you, you you may need to uh, run successful campaigns, and when you create a duplicate, you can uh, receive a new ad zones and uh, get a bit different results and uh, improve your revenues? Well, I can add that a successful campaign uh, can be scaled by uh, uh, using uh, other ad formats. And probably if, uh, campaign, if your offer converts well on uh, push, you can give a try to other ad formats, say native uh, or interstitials. Uh, speaking about native, it's uh, to a certain degree, uh, it's uh, similar to push traffic, so the, audi the audience that uh, works well with, uh, uh, that converts well on push traffic can convert on native as well. And uh, we can basically we consider uh, push notifications as a variation of uh, native ad formats. Uh, why do we do so? To start with, uh, it's, uh, uh, we collect our database uh, from uh, placements, uh, that we started working with uh, for Popanda traffic. So uh, if we have an idea of how, of what uh, the placements are, let's say they are related to uh, sports. Uh, if we uh, run, uh, uh, send no if users, uh, as I mentioned before, users subscribe to notifications voluntarily. Uh, so if they opt in for uh, receiving notifications from a content from a particular site, they are very likely to be interested in this content. And consequently, if they receive notifications, they are already acceptive to it. Uh, w speaking more generally about uh, scaling up with different ad formats, uh, again, depending on the vertical, if your campaign performs well on push, you can always give a try to good old pops. Uh, definitely, it's, uh, it's worse uh, for the verticals that convert for uh, pop traffic in general. For example, if you run a successful casino campaign uh, with push traffic, you can find an approach to make it work with pops. Uh, at the contrary, making work diet, nutra, or health products with pop traffic requires a lot of efforts. So let's uh, move to the next question. Uh, is it better to use pre lenders in push notifications or di direct linking performance better overall? Uh, if it depends on the vertical, in which verticals direct linking and in which verticals pre-lenders? Uh, well, that's a great uh, questions, uh, question. Uh, I believe that uh, affiliate uh, marketing and uh, uh, it's all about uh, sales funnels. Uh, if you add a pre-lender, you will get uh, higher quality of uh, clicks on the uh, actual uh, landing page. Uh, at the same time, uh, you can lose uh, some clicks uh, uh, in the process. Uh, in general, most verticals work uh, uh, better with uh, pre-landing pages because they uh, explain in more details what users can uh, expect on uh, the uh, offer page. For example, dating, Nutra uh, definitely perform better with uh, pre-landing pages. Uh, speaking about, uh, the same probably goes uh, for trading uh, offers and uh, some sweepstakes. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, you, always, you can always uh, should, uh, bear in mind that uh, uh, if you make your sales funnel too complicated, it uh, will cost you a lot of uh, leads. And uh, uh, maybe you can add something, Jerome. Anton, you have so much detail, so I don't have uh, anything to add. And um, let's move to the other question from Stan, uh, who's asking, have you plans to implement auto-optimization? And if yes, uh, when? 
Uh, thank you for the question, Stan. Uh, as you might know, um, we got uh, the smart uh, CPA model on the pop and uh, we will uh, we, we got in plans to implement something similar to our push notifications very soon. We won't uh, name uh, the exact date because sometimes they shift to make the product uh, almost ideal for you initially. So uh, please stay tuned and uh, we will uh, let you know about it. And the next question, uh, will you have uh, gender targeting? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, um, targeting options for push traffic vary for, uh, comparing to, say, social uh, traffic. Uh, social networks uh, offer a great variety of uh, options, gives you great, uh, great and uh, a very detailed information about who your users are. Uh, with push traffic, uh, the, uh, the whole foundation of this ad format is uh, slightly different. And uh, obviously with uh, social traffic, you know more about your target audience. However, when it comes to push traffic, it is compensated with its uh, volumes and lower price. At this moment, we do not have uh, demographic or uh, social targeting. Uh, and uh, adding uh, such uh, targeting options would uh, transform uh, the market. Thank you, Anton. And um, another question is from Charles, uh, who's asking how effective uh, push notifications in building an opt-in list. Well, Charles, uh, the whole webinar uh, is all about the point that the uh, push notifications are one of the most effective uh, ways to interact with the users now. And if you got your own website when you can subscribe users to getting the notifications from you, that would be one of the most uh, effective ways to contact them for now. And the next question is from Stan. Uh, do you resell traffic from other pu uh, push traffic networks? Uh, well, uh, to start with, as I uh, said previously, uh, we s started uh, as a pop network. So we uh, have uh, direct relationships with thousands of uh, placements, uh, thousands of websites. So this is how we managed to quickly build uh, the foundation of uh, our uh, of our uh, user database. Uh, at the same uh, at the same time, probably I would reveal a little secret. Uh, all the ad networks uh, uh, exchange uh, uh, traffic between themselves uh, because, uh, for instance, somebody has a very very in intense uh, demand for particular. Uh, Play for particular targeting for a particular country at a given time, and uh, uh, in our case, we all we have our own uh, quality uh, procedure that ensures that only uh, only uh, high quality traffic is uh, added to our inventory. Uh, furthermore, we uh, have a very limited uh, list of uh, suppliers for push traffic. And uh, this, these are basically just uh, few, very few uh, companies that have been in the market for a long time. And just to add, we have, uh, uh, as, as we mentioned, we have uh, 300 million unique users and we, we, our database is one of the biggest on the market. Uh, well, guys, uh, we just need to select uh, the best question for today, I think, Anton. Okay, uh, yeah, unfortunately our time is uh, pretty limited and uh, as I mentioned previously, we will have a special post on, uh, on our uh, resources, on our Facebook page, on our blog and we will be, uh, in, in this post, we will answer all the questions that we have received. Uh, in my, I personally really love Jonathan's question uh, about uh, the golden age of push notifications. What I agree, Anton. Uh, so, uh, Jonathan, your question uh, is uh, the best uh, this time and uh, you will be contacted by our PR department. Thank you, Jonathan. So, uh, guys, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Thank you very much for your questions. And uh, we really hope you, that you will be able to implement some takeaways from uh, this webinar in your day-to-day -day work and you will be able to make more money with our traffic. Stay tuned and uh, hope to see you at, uh, at other web webinars and uh, affiliate shows in the future. 
see you guys thank you